Welcome back to Cabin Fever Dreams on Night Mind, everyone. I'm very glad to see you enjoying the season already, and that you've given an incredible amount of love to our opening topic, Welcome Home. Tonight, I have another offering for you that's based out of a website. This time, with a touch of the humor we're accustomed to seeing in projects covered during spring. We go over a lot of odd things to celebrate in this period, but tonight, we're checking out a Night Mind Index entry that's quite literally titled, Weird Stuff That Happens. <laughs> At least they're upfront about it, right? Speaking of weird things found on the internet, let's not forget the usual hazard of this type of exploration. Coming across 100 different things that want to wreak havoc on you online. To help us dodge everything that's the really bad type of weird in our journey, our old friends at Surfshark are here to sponsor tonight's video. Defying data and info thieves with industry-leading uncrackable encryption, disguising your IP address and providing DNS leak protection so nobody knows where you're connecting from, and backing you up with strict no-logs policy on a RAM-only server network in over 100 countries are just a few of the ways Surfshark has your back. And they're the only VPN to reach that amount of coverage, by the way. No matter where you are or what platform you're using, from smartphones to game consoles, you can enable protection and the multiple benefits that come with Surfshark, like unlocking other countries' libraries on streaming services, just switch the country server and suddenly you've got a whole new array of options. This is especially helpful for traveling in territories where your streaming service of choice is not available. And when exploring unknown waters online, you can use Clean Web to automatically block more than 1 million known malicious websites, phishing methods, and other threats. Easy to install, easy to run, and with a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee, Surfshark is ready to show you just how much better your online experience can be. For a limited time, get 83% off of a two-year plan plus three extra months for free at surfshark.deal slash nightmind. This special offer makes your subscription just $2.21 per month. Go to surfshark.deal slash nightmind and use code nightmind or click the link in the video description to protect your online privacy today. Again, just go to surfshark.deal slash nightmind and use code nightmind or click the link in the video description. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring tonight's video and for the offer to Nightmind viewers. Now, a word about this project before we proceed. I was caught between deciding whether to do this for a full hands-on approach in a script and seeing how it fell to the mercy of a poll for a Twitch stream. And guess what? Not only did viewers on Twitch decide to take this on, everything turned out way better because of it. You'll see why. Our exploration took a very fun turn at the end that only would have occurred in that environment with viewer suggestions live. As for what the project is like, <laughs> Well, it's better if I just let you see at first glance. A lot of you, I think, are going to be delighted with the creative direction, as I was. So, without further ado, here's some weird stuff that happens. Okay, the poll is up. Oh, wow. What's this? <laughs> Excellent timing. <laughs> okay, so yes, the poll is up. Go ahead and take a look. Hey, what can I say except you picked it? <laughs> Why does this look like one of those lousy educational games your parents would force you to play as a kid? Yeah, that's what immediately attracted me. Okay, so yes, it's a mid-2000s style site, as you can see. And it's about weird stuff that happens. And oh, look! 16 hours ago, 16 hours ago, one of the contributors wished us a happy St. Patrick's Day. So as you can see, just from March 16th, National Pandas Day, March 15th, Buzzards Day, March 14th, Pi Day, uh, they've been active. Oh, and there are comments from six hours ago. Kevin saying, I still stand by that claim. I remember it like it was yesterday, only the leprechaun didn't give me any gold. Turns out they're just normal, albeit magical guys like the rest of us. Pretty funny guy too, wonder how he's doing. And there are two replies from Gemini28. Did you ever get his name? If you did, you've got a possible Fey link to fall back on if you need help in the future. I wish I remembered. Shoot! Ah well, if you see one, make sure to wave and smile. So you can see already one of the dynamics of this site here for this project is that there, there is a group. There is a group, as you can see here, which we get information from under the mods tab, I believe. So yeah, Thomas A. Benedetto, Tom Tab, uh, the website's creator and webmaster, writing most of the articles and loves their friends. I'm excitable 
easily distracted. On the flip side, I'm also kind of shy and insecure, so my mask of the site's mascot weirdo stays on at all times. Okay, that's the website mascot. Um, hmm. There's mouse. Favorite color green. See, mouse lo must love this day. The loyal editor. Dave Spid. Okay. Dave Spid has it. Neo Cities, huh? Whoa! <laughs> Holy shit! Okay! This is getting cooler already. Wow! Oh, God! Oh! You have no idea what a throwback this kind of thing is. Oh, man. If you are under the age of, like, 21. You truly just do not know. Oh, it's kind of up on the sides. Damn, hold on. Dave Spid's site. <laughs> Introducing ghosts, home, and links. Internet Explorer's evil. Hey you, learn HTML now. Neo Cities, SETI at home. I'm in your screen. <laughs> oh, an email. Ghosts. <laughs> Tahu. Toe Tahu. Oh, amazing. Missed my personal ghost experiences. Okay, here's the page you need to go to for ghosts. I've really only had one big experience with a ghost, so I'm going to be talking about that here. My family moved towns a couple times when I was first starting elementary school. Not the best method to instill confidence in an already very shy child. Later on, I understood why we, I understood we kept moving because my dad was settling into a new job. At the time, I was too focused on Beyblade and Bionicles to try to understand. This shit was so cool, I swear to God. <laughs> but our first move was rather strategically timed. We left Macon, Mason, Macon, and got settled in Atlanta the summer before I started first grade. But then we moved again about 13 months later, right as I was starting second grade. Poor timing. My parents doomed me to a year of being the new kid at OC Elementary School, which really prevented me from making many friends. I swear this is important information to know for my ghost experience, just keep reading. My parents both worked nine to five jobs. Once elementary had an after school program where a teacher would lead a bunch of kids to the public library to hang out until they could get picked up by parents. <laughs> after school playground was intimidating for a loner new kid. So I ended up getting to know the library really well that year. Keep reading for ghosts! I wasn't averse to reading. I read plenty during class, but I barely ever read books when I was at the library. Instead, I would orbit around the library's computers until I could swoop in and take a seat in front of one of the grand blocky monitors. You know that you did that. You know most of you did that. OC Library had four computers in the corner of the kids section. They had CD-ROM type games for kids to learn how to read or type. Typical stuff. Oh, jeez. Uh, I can't find any images of the OC Public Library back in 2005, but this was essentially the vibe of the library back then. Computer setup to the right is very similar to what OC had, just with less computers. As the weeks went by, I started noticing less and less kids were using the left quarter computers. Like, I had a substantially higher chance of claiming this computer quicker than any of the other ones. Maybe it was just a coincidence of timing. Maybe a kid had to leave at the same time I arrived every day. But I had a hunch that there was something more to that. Something that was repelling people from using this specific computer. Maybe a virus? Maybe it's super slow? Maybe the mouse is too sticky or the screen is glitchy? I couldn't tell that anything was wrong with the computer whenever I used it. Oh, these tiny spitting gifts. <laughs> but yeah, I spent a lot of time on that computer. My parents didn't let me use dad's computer at home, so this library copy was the first frontier into the cyberweb. Jesus, cyberweb. After exhausting the pedagogic... Well, that's quite a word, yeah? CD-ROMs, I started exploring Internet Explorer, playing on the Flash game sites I saw other kids use. Oh, you mean like this? I watched my first SB mails on that thing. Okay. Soon I started customizing the computer. 
You know when you're a kid and messing with a computer's display panel feels like hacking the mainframe? I switched out the bland library desktop background for a cool dragon picture I found online. We're going to stop there. How many of you acted like a bunch of little degenerates and flipped the background wallpaper in a public setting to something that it shouldn't have been? <laughs> I knew it. Anime picks. <laughs> cool dragon pictures. And change the screensaver from the standard 3D text. Fulton County Library System floating around to 3D pipes. The best screensaver to this day. Yes, it was. Yes, it fucking was. <laughs> 3D pipes. Or, or actually, the brick wall maze. Oh, how did we not have a creepypasta about the brick wall maze? How was that not the progenitor to Backrooms? That's probably why the Backrooms took off the way it did, was a bunch of a bunch of you were raised off of brick wall maze screensavers. I'm surprised the librarians never reset my changes. Maybe they didn't check on the kid computers very often. I really felt a connection with that copy. I felt like it was my own personal safe place, where I didn't have to try to make friends or even talk. By fifth grade, I found the ability to make friends and realized I liked being outgoing. So don't feel sorry for me about this, okay? Here's where things get weird. One day, right before winter break, I noticed a new file on Copy's desktop. Wow, you really gave this thing its name, huh? Talkto.exe. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. It had a weird icon. A black square with a couple teal pixels wrinkled in. I was bored of Flash games that day, so I clicked on Talk To. It booted up a simple looking text program. I originally thought it was maybe like a text adventure, some kind of dungeon choose your own adventure. I remember entering a couple commands, but nothing happened. My commands weren't even logged, they just disappeared. <laughs> yeah, maybe premature screaming. So, Dave Spid opens up talk to booted up a simple looking text program yeah text adventure okay entered a couple commands nothing happened my commands weren't even logged they just disappeared i finally tried the classic hello a second later i got a response hi okay a little unsettling here's how the rest of the conversation went down as my memory serves for clarity my messages have proper capitalization though they probably didn't back when this happened hello what's your name I'm new here. Who are you? My name is David. Do you have a name? <laughs> I don't remember. I'm new here. Where are you from? I don't remember. I'm new here. At this point, I started to suspect that this was someone's attempt to create an Eliza-esque program. Maybe an older kid was getting into programming and using his computer. I felt the urge to start messing with it. Have you heard about our Lord and Savior Strongback? Ah, here we go. <laughs> I feel like I walked into that one. Oh. <laughs> so it replies, why do you like the color blue? How would you know if I like the color blue? You wear that jacket a lot. Oh, shit. <laughs> now that freaked me out. I had a favorite hoodie. And yes, it was blue. After I read that, I immediately closed the talk to window. It was one of the first moments I had on the internet where I felt like I was doing something wrong. Like I was looking at and reading something I wasn't supposed to. Oh, now that's a fun feeling. You know, that that's actually something I haven't really encountered in the stuff that we've covered. It's a lot of the stuff that we've seen is just that that callback to that that sudden moment on the internet of oh no <laughs> the oh no sense yeah honey ain't kidding those moments were legit terrifying Oof. especially when it was wild west internet it's about to get a lot more fun in here naturally my first thought was that this computer was super haunted i was seven and had never touched a computer before in my life I barely understood what a computer virus was, and I was too naive to conspiratize that someone real or dangerous could have made that program to lure kids. Easy explanation. Ghosts. 
Oh, 3D pipes. Our beloved. I didn't go back to the public library until school started back up in the spring. I avoided looking at the computer corner for a long time. I started actually using the library for its intended reading purposes. Our school had a readathon competition in February, so I was pushing as many books past my eyeballs as possible. Our class actually won the pizza party that year, not to brag. The spookiest moment from the whole computer situation happened in March. Okay, anniversary! Um, I was reading on the reader's carpet near the bookshelves, as one does. I heard someone draw some books, so I looked up, scanned my surroundings. I couldn't help but glance over at the kid computers. The left corner computer still had the 3D pipe screensaver like I left it. All those blue and silver and green squigglies. But then I noticed, in the corner of the screen, the pipes had tangled up into a unique shape. The blue pipes had spelled out my name in the center of the screen. David. The green and silver pipes were all dancing around on the edges of the screen, like that blue David was oppositely charged and pushing the other pipes away. It made me feel instantly sick. <laughs> I think the computer knew I had looked up, because the green and silver pipes started tangling up and obscuring the message seconds after my heart dropped. I hid in the I hid in the bathroom until my mom could pick me up, and then I stopped going to the library after school. I told my mom I wanted to be picked up from the play playground instead of the public library. We moved to Cranesville after I finished second grade, for more job reasons. I was relieved that I got a new start somewhere, and that we moved in the summer so I wasn't going to be late to the friend-making part of the first month of school. And I was glad I wouldn't be reminded of my computer ghost every time I passed the public library. But since OC Libraries probably gotten rid of those old desktops by now, I don't think I'm ever going to find out what was going on with that computer. But yeah, I don't have any explanation for whatever the hell happened, except for ghosts. I definitely kept believing a ghost was haunting that computer, and I honestly still kind of believe it. Links. Are you kidding? My friend Tom's website, weird stuff that happens. Homestar Runner. Giftcities.org. Internet Archive. So that doesn't even go to Internet Archive. Blinky's Cafe. <laughs> oh, it's a generator. Okay. So let's let's go back. All right. So we know Dave Spid, um, and by the way, Alexa Sick, Macabre Erudition, and Excel six two three. Thank you all for following. Welcome to the Nightmare Office. We have going down the mod list: Calexta, an associate. They any cake magenta. Hey, Vizarius, Thank you for subscribing with Prime. Much appreciated. Known Ariel for years, glad to finally have her join the site. Loves all things cute, and she doesn't care who knows it. Yeah, this is about as mid-2000s as it gets, huh? B-Mods, still part of the team, but not the main members. David's boyfriend and Cal's cousin. He's busy teaching himself how to make point-and-click adventure games. Pim! Favorite color, pitch black. <laughs> My nemesis and a general pest, Pim fancies himself an amateur supervillain. He is fairly polite with anyone other than me, and he really doesn't do anything worse than being mildly annoying. Regardless, he's definitely got the supervillain style down. I've given him this role to keep an eye on him. Okay. Weird pets. Let's check out weird pets. Weird pets are funny virtual pets made from love, electricity, and vague nostalgia. They are shaped like orbs and sound like old video games. Make your own. Hosted on Picru. This game lets you make your own weird pet. Far out. Is the far out too much? I never know. Weird pet facts. One foot, two inches tall. Pillow size at full size. Okay. Didn't expect that. 
Uh, Weirdo is a weird pet, and the website's a mascot. Anything about him will be on this page. Uh. Oh, no. Oh, I'm getting some Wham City vibes. Remember, remember the whole Clara Drill experience. If anything happens to me, do not play or destroy the tape. I'm fully aware how the... You know what? Let me... Here we go. Now we're talking. Do not play or destroy the tape. I'm fully aware how this sounds, and unless you have the tape, I don't care if you trust me. And I know everyone says this in every stupid creepypasta story on the internet. It always goes like this. I've read far too many of them hoping for a glimpse of someone else this has actually happened to. But if the To Be The Train Engine VHS tape is in your possession, you need to read this. If not, it's up to you if you want to know the details of how I got this thing on my back. Thank you, Sarge. What happened to me happened March 7th, 2003, three days before my fifth birthday. Why is it always March? My grandmother sent down a gift from Massachusetts, where my dad's from. A bootleg cartoon collection VHS tape with a bootleg Thomas the Tank Engine on the cover. Yes, it is. And a list of the cartoons supposedly on the tape on the back. I've looked up all the listed cartoons online, and they are all publicly available, train-themed public domain cartoons. The package came in while my dad and siblings were leaving to go to a toy store. I have a twin, and dad brought her and my younger brother with him to help get my birthday presents that year, and in turn, I was supposed to go with him and my younger brother to a different toy store the next day. My mom put the tape in for me as soon as she saw it and walked out of the room. I watched a minute of logos and FBI warnings before three red bars came across the screen. A loud, sharp tone broke the room as all hell broke out of that TV screen. Out popped some sort of phantom figure, a blur of blues and purples and reds, color and motion and ghostly arms with needle-like blade teeth hidden in its hands. It didn't break the screen as much as it reached through the screen like an open window. I did my best to depict it the best I can remember. Oh. Okay. Huh. I immediately dived for the TV plug and unplugged the TV, quickly closing the window and cleaving off the creature's limbs in the process. Its severed arms lie twitching on the floor like beached fish. Now that's fucking metal. My mother came in, saw the creature's bleeding severed limbs, and called 911. The authorities arrived, assured my mom that the creature's limbs had to have been some sort of sick animal. And despite my four-year-old protests, they plugged back in the TV and restarted the tape to see why I was so upset by it and to show me it wasn't the problem. The loud ring came back out of the TV. I saw it lunch for me. I felt the worst stinging, burning feeling I felt in my life. And wasps and scorpions have gotten me before, and I woke up in the emergency room. I spent my fifth birthday in the hospital as they surgically removed the creature's needle-like teeth from my skin. The authorities declared the situation outside their jurisdiction and referred to an expert who told them to make sure they destroyed the thing's body but left us with the tape. They said their expert told them it shouldn't be played again, but not to destroy it in case it's the only thing keeping that monster in or something. Part of me still feels like none of it happened, and I just got attacked by some animal and dreamed the rest, but I have undeniable evidence of my experience. The first is a single twisted bone I have in my room that the cops didn't take with them. It doesn't like cameras, and it smells awful, and it's turned green over the years. Um. <laughs> I don't know about the plausibility of this one. Uh. Ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a picture. It is green. Despite how it's messing with my phone, my mom has a Geiger counter for her occasional work with vintage jewelry and it came up neutral the last three times I've checked it, so I know it isn't radiation glitching. Also the fact that the glitching effect on my phone is only temporary, lasting only as long as my phone focuses on the bone itself, leaving no apparent lasting damage to the device. The second is a number of scars on my arms and legs. Don't expect pictures of those. I keep them covered with long sleeves all year, which sucks in the Georgia heat. I don't know how I'd answer if anyone asked what happened to me, what happened to me doesn't really happen to people. Maybe in stories, but not to actual people with responsibilities and loved ones who can talk to you and say hello to you in public. I'm only 24. 
I can't just die to a horror cliche that can't be real, and yet I feel it in every moment of woe I experience. I can feel its teeth in my scars in every moment of strong despair or anxiety I experience. It wants me dead and it wants me to know this, and the terror that it could get what it wants drives the ghost of its teeth deeper in my limbs every time I try to fall asleep. I know our lives are linked. If I destroy the tape, it's taking me down with it. If I die, that monster starves. But as long as I'm alive, I can just keep starving it and it won't be able to do anything to anyone else. I guess it's getting impatient or I'm getting too happy for it or something because it's been acting up and I don't know what to do. The bone is out in the open. The tape is in a lockbox in a secure location. If the tape is out in the open and you have access to it, it is now your responsibility to find a new place to hide it. I've been starving this thing for almost 20 years now. It's got to be very hungry. You can't play the tape. That lets it out and whatever happens to me will happen to you too unless you can unplug it in time. If I'm not around to carry it, it's your burden now. If I'm fine and you're reading this, you may now understand why I try to live every day one day at a time, cherishing everything I can find to cherish. I don't know when it's going to get me, but I know the only thing I can do now is to keep myself happy and busy. This website does both for me. Linkara said, so the moral of the story, Thomas the Tank Engine bootlegs are far more interesting than you would expect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the personality quiz section of the website. Quizzes are best viewed on desktop, but workable on mobile. Are you stellar? You quiz link. Personality quiz. You could be a kind of lame constellation. Not all stars are stellar. Enter your name. What are you about? You could be a sci-fi subgenre. I know I am, okay? Uh, are you sweet? You could be a hard candy. <laughs> I don't know, chat. What kind of candy would you say that I am? Are you hungry and funny? Are you in control? <laughs> okay, now this is getting fun. You could be some sort of puppet. Hard candy, gooey, black licorice, butterscotch, minty, dark chocolate, the most savory dark chocolate, dark chocolate with peppermint. Mint dark chocolate sounds like me, honestly. Choose a big mammal. Select a fabric texture. I like knit. How do you like your puppets? Creepy, silly, cool, or beautiful? Choose an onomatopoeia. Pow, wham, boing, or zap. R.I.P. George Michael. <laughs> Select an evil baby name. Lilith. Gotta go and give, give some love to my mother. Choose a form of party lighting. Oh, come on. If you know when you're partying with me, you know what the mood's gonna be. Do you believe in space aliens? I think they are out there very far away. I believe in aliens on Earth. I don't believe in alien life. I am from another planet. I mean, technically, kinda. I'm not even sure yet. <laughs> This is just the same digital puppet. This is probably the same all the way down, isn't it? Wait a minute. Digital pu- Fine. Fine. Fuck you. <laughs> Dream journal! Ooh, okay. November 8th. 
Cal was in my living room watching a new episode of Invader Zim <laughs> with me somehow. And a very large CGI looking. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is to sit down and watch Invader Zim with friends. Isn't it? <laughs> and a very large CGI looking anthro frog came through my front door and told me and Cal we needed to evacuate because a sinkhole had already killed a few people. 16th. My mom came home from work and got hamburgers for dinner. While holding the food, she told me the voice of Brad Garrett screaming and crying that she got t she got fired from her job. <laughs> Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Do I? Because most of you guys won't even remember who the hell Brad Garrett is. Here he is. This is Brad Garrett, the brother from Everybody Loves Raymond. <laughs> 25th, I was back in the playroom again, but it looked like the aftermath of it being played. I was semi-lucid and tried to leave the room, but the door was locked. I then tried waking up and got stuck in sleep paralysis. 26th, another night, another nightmare. I was in a large and stark red room, and I could see the three red bars that were on it when it happened from the other side of the room. I checked the tape's lockbox this morning, and it doesn't look like anyone's touched it in years. December 1st. Oh, we'll get that in a second. The playroom was melting into a dark, melting plastic sludge. I tried to run to the door, but I tripped in the plastic sludge and started to drown in it. it looked down on me as the plastic filled my lungs. <laughs> Yay, more bone! Hers. <laughs> Thank you, Anabisium. It looked down on me as the plastic filled my lungs. Nosebleeds haven't slowed. Can't keep doing this. Don't know what to do. Self-help. This page is for my own personal reference, but on the improbable chance you find yourself in my situation, you may, be, may be able to, by your own digression, learn from my experiences. You're using that wrong again. Um, oh, this is a long one. Uh, okay. Update 2. Cal knows what to do. I have to make an herbal brine, and I have to wash the bone in it. Cal says using the V symbol, well that's not a V symbol, it's a, that's an astro, that's an astrological symbol, right? Uh, will probably help as well. I try not to mess with any supernatural practices or rituals, but considering my situation, my direct instructions, the fact I already have everything for it at my house, and David telling me to listen to whatever Cal says on the matter, I'll give it a shot. No dreams tonight? Slept like a baby. Seventh, I was at the beach with the other mods, and there were just so many crabs. It was a long dream, but that's all I remember. Crab rave? Oh, Ghostly Pepper says it's the purify symbol used in alchemy. Thirteenth, I opened my fridge and blood fell out. As it does. It was actually more funny than scary, and I laughed it off in the dream. This was before asking myself, wait, where's the refrigerator's food? I have to make breakfast. And I instantly woke up. Not a nightmare, but definitely an odd dream. I was eating a bag of what looked like Skittles, but they were all blue and purple. And then the candy started crying. I put them down, but then Neil C.C. Aranga walked in and told me they were only upset because they were cold, and so he microwaved them. I woke up before the microwave ended. <laughs> <laughs> Neo Cicerig, oh my god! Oh, living demon, I love you! January 7th, I was babysitting Strong Bad for some reason, and he kept asking to watch Marble Hornets on VHS. And I told him Strong Bad, the last time I put it on, he started crying, and I had to apologize to your mom. That's not happening. He then threw a table at me, and I woke up. I think Dracula was also in the dream in an earlier part. I don't remember as well. All right. So, yeah. The people who created this site are our people. That's for sure. A figure standing in front of my house, impossibly tall in a way things only are in dreams, somehow unobstructed by fog. 
definitely alive. I could tell it was bright and had a lot of appendages that seemed to fractal out from and back into each other, like a webbed CGI texture crashing in on itself, and it stood on high stilted legs. It was half inside the house it came from, and the fire from the house was starting to go up the creature's limbs and burn away. December. Now I see. You're supposed to cross-reference these two pages. Lately, I've suddenly started experiencing nightmares and nosebleeds. I know it has something to do with a monster tagging me when I turn five. Okay, yeah, no, I get it. This is easy to see. You're supposed to cross-reference the dreams and the activity in the self-help. Because they should have interplay between them for narrative. Calexta 97 was the code name of a children's dictionary program created and developed by the late Dr. Susan Finch from 97 to 2008. It was outfitted with an experimental voice recognition system, Dr. Finch also developed by herself. Huh. The dictionary was outfitted as a child-friendly chat bot tentatively named Cal, short for Computer Pal. Cal was made to be a digital, gender-neutral child narrator. Cal was accompanied by a set of seven stuffed animal characters. These characters were supposed to be the AI's personal toys that they would share with the user while they were learning together. The program was designed to work for both one-on-one -on -one sessions with a child and for group sessions with an adult presenter. While both modes of the program were well received in internal testing, the program had issues stabilizing funding and multiple companies put money into the project before pulling out over issues of budgeting or changes in internal management. Eventually, the project was sold to a company only interested in the dictionary's voice detection capabilities, yet purchased all but the internal name and placeholders. The true form of Calexta 97 was one of an edutainment program that will never be released, but Dr. Finch was satisfied with the reuse of her work in her lifetime. Correction, Mod Cal used to be Mod Jax, later renaming themselves after the program. Okay. Maybe all the characters are based on the seven stuffies? Oh. Hmm. The main game console. Quite cute. According to multiple sources, the symbol in the background was a symbol personally used by Dr. Finch. Callus started using the symbol themselves in her honor. Okay, so the alchemical purify symbol was part of the program. Montclair. See honor. Patty Cat, Stuffy Bunny. <laughs> this reminds me of Shia Bun, that that rabbit who raided a little while back. If you check if you check out Shia Bun, you'll see they're rocking uh, a full pink rabbit sometimes. Oh, what is romance? Said little Bubba may be related to the frog in Thomas's dream that warned him about the sinkhole. Maybe. Chip the Cookie Dog. Penny Gwen. Guzzle Raccoon. Wow, that's a lot more pages, huh? Whoa, whoa, okay, hold on. We're moving too fast. Wow. This just went... <laughs> Whew. Uh, open archive of the web pages made by the creature inside the train tape from when it took over the website. Click Warning Weirdo to enter. To be. Wow. <laughs> Holy shit. This got strange. Bug. Who. Crystal. Oh, this is cool. Stone. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of new pages in here. A copy of Collects the 97. Words. Mothman. Bright. Hand. Oh, there's, there's a happy. Gallery. You gotta tap the page, that's how you find the hidden links. That's right, yeah, you can fly up and down with tabbing, you're right. 
Whew. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll check all the all the links in a, in a second. It's just whew. wow. This is this is so fun. This is cool. Copy of VHS. You really want to know? I don't know. Do we really want to know? Never let this goes by, or you might, might be, be the, the next to die. They wrap you in a bloody sheet, and throw you down about 50 feet. feet. The worms grow in, <laughs> the worms crawl out, in your stomach and out your mouth. Your eyes fall out, your teeth decay, and that's the end of your wonderful day. You're dead. Let's do it. I just realized. I can hear sounds from the web page. I think I was hearing got a dog. something. The sound might be broken. A salute emote? Yes, you're right. We need a salute emote. Thank you, Tazin. Yeah, you know what? Let me make let me make that uh that Robbie salute head into an actual emote. He'd get a he'd get a kick and a half out of that. Okay, here we go. Play safe, Tunerville Trolley, Betty Boop Limited, Tunerville Trolley. Get going. Animal, stone, vegetable. Animal first. A copy of Calexta. Copy of Calexta. Gallery. Whew. Kangaroo Jack. <laughs> Vegetable. Copy of Calexta and ton. Oh. All right, hold on, hold on. I can get a translation. I can get a translation. Your soul will find itself alone. It contemplates the dark ashes of the grave. No one asks for a crowd of all. In your hour of intimacy, silence in this solitude, it is not solitude, because then the ghosts of the dead who stood in life before you, they are again in death around you, and in their will he will shade you with his shoulders. Silence the night, though clear rumbles, that the stars will not lower their eyes from high seats in the heavens. Light has given hope to mortals, but red, without beam, they will be seen to your annoyance, as hot and feverish may they always remain true to you. Okay. Omelette du fromage. Yeah. Or as that, uh, as that dude, uh, Leroy said <laughs> once, baguette, ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Um. Ton. Kia's. Hand. Whoa! Whoa, okay. 19th. Oh. What happened to me? March 7, 2003. Three days before fifth birthday, my grandmother sent a gift from Massachusetts. Yeah, we've heard that. Okay. Train from 1930 to 1970. Cade Weird said. Be, by the way, at the beginning of that page, there were some letters not filled in black. Hmm, they might be important. We could always come around again. There were letters, huh? Yeah. Yeah, this seems like a kill count. Um, 1980. Book. Spiderwebs. Oh, shit. Oh! 
Well, that just loaded in lo uh, last. Oh, man. Okay. This is code. This is code, but... Okay. So, like I, I mentioned earlier, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this earlier, is that somebody gave me a document guide. Um. So, let me see if something pops out in that. The code breaks down to, allegedly, Insolent punk tried running from me. His blood is still in my mouth and I crave more. You can't wash away your own blood. It will stick to you in your clothes. Hmm. Oh. Ego Tubi. Thanks for the help, bud. Ego Ventera. Do you hunger? Yes. <laughs> Are you in control? Gallery. Alright. Let's check the guide, see what that one is. Gallery. Gallery. Translation. I chose to be a train so no one could stop me and I should have stayed like that. Ah. So it was an actual train. It looks like it. It looks like it was a train. Yeah, Vampirillus is right. That must mean the emojis next to the kill count indicate the form the creature has taken. The train emoji, the tape emoji. At one point it seemed to be a book or something. Wow, what the hell do we make of this? Couldn't the book emoji be the book of the computer David experienced at the library? Did David encounter with a monster? Maybe. Or maybe it was Collects to 97. Copy of Collects to. Daft Alchemist. Oh, look, a kill count of all the creatures from inside the supposed game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. <laughs> you love Tubi. I'm not loving anything about this. This is, this is fucked. Oh, hey, there's the blood that fell out of the fridge. Right. Okay, what the hell is this one supposed to mean? Hold up. The page bright. Okay, translation. Even when you are dead, you will never rest as long as I am out there. It's very cool. It's very cool. I think we've kind of run out of places to tap here. I think we we've, we've done the run around. Zodiac archive. Oh, from January of this year. Aries fireworks. Display in the sky made of gunpowder mixed with pigments. Taurus lamp device used to light a large area. Gemini older when more time has passed. Cancer, Clock, Leo, Claw, Virgo, Dog, Libra, Dice, Scorpio, Ice Skate, Sagittarius, Painting, Capricorn, Spaceship, Aquarius, Perfume, Pisces, Hope. What is this even for? Employee of the Month. Mothman. <laughs> Victor Frankenstein. Wow. So, Mouse decided to be extra and talk shit about a legacy fictional character. You're not a doctor, you gave up on your first project, you abandoned your boy, you put your loved ones in danger for your own benefit, and you tried to marry your sister. Dipshit. Oh, she's adopted. Shut up, I'm gonna steal your bones. <laughs> oh, wow, this is a lot of shit talking for a fictional character that's... Uh... 
basically just an archetype now. You sure you don't have anything better to do, Mouse? <laughs> Something happened. Uh, as as early, as recently as March first and third. Um, okay. Okay. Time. Tom's alive, and we're all here. Tom stopped bleeding. What the hell happened? Okay, so now we're back on the pulse of the story. It's pretty easy to see here that this website is mostly dedicated to, yes, the daily weird and stuff as a way of just operating normally, but everybody who's gravitated to the team here has weird stuff in their history. And specifically, Tom has the history involving the 2B tape and whatever creature is inside of it that used to be what seems to be a legitimate killer train got into the site and created such pandemonium that they all had to kind of meet up in person. This takes so much dedication. This takes so much dedication. Wow. All right, let's go back to whatever strange incident happened here. Thankfully, it looks like we're mostly out of the Tubiverse. What? What happened? <laughs> Elijah Leo, thank you for following. Welcome to the Night Mind office and uh, whatever insane stuff happened here. Yeah, but I'm not going to fix it later. Girlfriend says I need to chill out. I lost a lot of blood. As one casually does. Oh my god, ghostly pepper. <laughs> well, that makes sense why you know. Well, again, thank you for the doc. I've, I, I've, obviously, I've been trying not to look at it because I like to go through things personally. It's like the last, the only time I will really reference anything made by uh, by someone as a compilation is when I when I get so stuck that I realize, okay, I need some semblance of guidance here. The main person behind this is watching. They just can't get Twitch to verify their number. Oof. Just remember it's there if you need it. Yeah, I got you. 49 replies? So this Tubi creature was speaking through Thomas here. You have several faces only a mother could love. If she were a lamprey. You look like a rotting shag carpet left in a warehouse since the 70s. Kids tell campfire stories scarier than you. <laughs> Ordinateur is French for computer. Okay. Joey wants you to know that he fully 100% believes that Cal can fix this. It's going to be okay, Tom. If anyone can fix this, Cal is the one. Mouse showed up. We saw that earlier. Do you know what kind of dedication this takes? Seriously. Check the rest of the replies in the Ariel comment. They're fun. It's... I don't think it's letting... Oh, 41 older replies. There it is. Okay, so Pim is a real mod. <laughs> Strong words coming from a wad of stale gum smeared on the sidewalk. Even your name is stupid. Aw, oh, come on. We have a 2B in our midst. We can't let that happen. 2B, we love you. We love our 2B. It's okay, our 2B. Just ignore what they're saying. Just ignore what they're saying. Apparently, the worst you can do is nightmares, nosebleeds, and impromptu graphic design. <laughs> oh, jeez. Your house is a beat up little box on some guy's shelf. <laughs> Damn! 
You need a mentally ill 24-year-old just to stay alive. You call that threatening? I call that pathetic. Literally every other evil plan I've ever heard is better than that. <laughs> We're seeing everything here except your mama. <laughs> this is insane. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell you. I'm just gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real fucking real. I'm gonna be real aerial levels of real. You see this right here? You see this right here? This this is exactly how I feel when somebody sends me some to the arc looking bullshit in twenty twenty three trying to get my attention for their project. This is how I feel. This is how you come across and this is how I feel. So don't ever do it. Because this is the only reaction you'll get out of me, besides silence. Because you'll just be another VHS Tubi. <laughs> but as I was saying, do you realize how dedicated you have to be as a creator to do this? I don't know if, if the creator has companions helping, but this takes work. This takes work, you know? to set all this up, to do this every day, to create 80 comments worth of replies, to, to, put it, to put it all together and play it live. It takes dedication, and, and it's, it's very admirable. So yeah, I, I guess if you go through the uh the archives here of posts you will see activity that lines up in accordance with the story this very much is okay this is what this was they were doing an advent calendar oh that's so cute the edgelord mod is here You suppose you should tell me in chat as well that the chat button is indeed functional, huh? Nah, I'm not interested in the emails. Healy's Feelies actually has some input. The art, the articles, the story, and character concepts, all one creator. Many of the additional contributors are played by others, but it's a passion project. All right, well, in that case. Oh no. For the day Hold when on. the flag comes and that day is coming. It's yours, it's yours. It's your flag in the sky and we will Make it ours. It's the big gayest flag in the sky, and it's ours. And we want nothing more than to make it our own. And we're proud, and we're proud, and we're proud of the flag. Salute the flag, salute the flag, salute the flag. <laughs> Okay, that tracks. Guess you got a dollar.
unfucking believable to think I had respect in this part of the world. I'm gonna break your arms first, then I'm gonna break your legs. And while you sit there screaming, I'm gonna disembowel you and you'll bleed to death. Um, however, I can make it so that you bleed to death slowly. Any questions? Well, let's turn it over to you then. Oh, okay. Well, good on them. Good on them. They know what they're doing here. Thank you, Tazim. Alaron the Raven, thank you for following. Welcome. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> What's his favorite Neopet? All right, yeah, we'll ask. What's that one that name starts with an X and it's like a mammal? Hmm. Okay, Vesper, I'll ask for you. Jelly Neo? What is that, a guide? Yeah, you know, to be completely honest, um, this is, com this is right, <laughs> right, right on brand for Cabin Fever Dream Season, isn't it? I didn't expect this shit, but hey. You want to know about new symptoms like the nightmares? Okay, we can ask that. Factory showroom. 
Okay. You know what? Let's make our lives a little easier here. Hold on. There we go. Someone get Fred to name his next video down the Noctisy? You got it backwards. I don't know. I think that you scared Tom. Wix chat is being iffy. Aww. All right. Cool. So, <laughs> I'm going to call this a, uh, a victory. Okay, Cal is texting me. Oh, update, update.
cinnamon slander in the chat. You hate to see it. I do hate to see it. Fred, it is way too late to explain, honey. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're lost, you're lost. All right. So now that now that I think this is actually the blinding thing would work. Yeah, because I know magic. All right. Well, thank you, Fred. <laughs> and I'll say it here too, Cal. You're welcome. <laughs> you did good so far from what we could read, but... Uh... There's always extra measures you could take to actually spit in something's eye. To say the least. There we go, Scarwing. All right, screw it. Ah, <sighs> well, that was fun. <laughs> I really didn't expect that. Uh, I really did not. But uh, you know, have a good rest of the night. There. Now we're set. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, wow. this is a What's fun one. This? That's for sure. This, this is a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of dedication, a lot of creativity. This is a wonderful project it's with such love here. for, you know, the double O's. And that whole aesthetic of things, just carrying it forward into modern day like this, and appreciating the idea of unfiction storytelling in this fashion. And I mean it, you've got to be dedicated to do this. You truly have to be so dedicated, and it's so admirable. They've been doing this for at least a year, you know, at least a year, with no guarantees of anything. Anything other than their own enjoyment and the, and the enjoyment of their peers. And <laughs> look what happened. We stopped in tonight. We found this. We had a lot of fun. It got crazier than we thought it would. And just like that, even though it, it's, it's probably better for the creators to chalk this up to, well, that was another weird thing that happened. <laughs> you know, and just we're not really regarded on the site. We just became an element of the project in our own tiny little way. This is a great time. Um, I highly encourage anybody who's interested, invested in the story and the rest of the storytelling that will happen to go ahead and follow this. Um, it's very simply WSTH weird stuff that happens. WSTH Tom Tab dot wix site dot com here i'll even toss you the link in here and if you forget it's in the nightmind dot info site it's in the index okay it's in the index under horror right. top billing all right so if you want to pop back in and you forgot the ta the gate, just drop by here. And again, that goes for anything. That goes for anything. Nightmind.info. That's how you get to the index. It's very simple. Nightmind.info. Because that's what the site is about, is giving you info. 
eight stays. Oh, eight stays as a friend of WSTH. Those are really sweet words and really appreciate that you checked it out. I'm glad that I did. Honestly, when it came through in the index for submissions, I was thrilled. I couldn't believe that something like this came across my desk. Um, and I, I saw the, the document. I saw how involved it was. I, I clicked around and I knew immediately what they were going for. And we're, we're set for tonight. I'd say that this is a mission accomplished. This has been a whole lot of fun for an index dive. Yeah, it really was a lot of fun. If someone who knew the creators hadn't told me in the chat to try the site chat, we would have missed out on that entire event. It's very clear that if somebody wants the actual continuity of events, they have to go through the old updates and cross-reference the dream reports and the self-help section. But it all seems rather simple. Tubi, the murderous train, managed to get out of the VHS somehow, infecting the site and attacking TomTab, with a lot of blood loss along the way. The bone from its first attack through the TV has been greatly pounded by magic under the guidance of Cal. And hey, if my advice on the salt jar sticks, that might just be a little bit of canon that's now part of the narrative thanks to the community atmosphere. Oh, and we have Dave Spade's very strange childhood occurrence from that delightful website. Who's hoping for more web crawling like that later? As stated during the stream, it's easy to keep up with this project if you'd like, and you can use the link in the video description to get there easily, or just go through the Nightmind Index. That's all for tonight, everyone. Thanks again to Surfshark for the sponsor. Thanks to the creators and contributors to Weird Stuff That Happens. Thanks to those who brought it to my attention and built that document to help with the page translations. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, who enable not only the work I put into Nightmind, but the curation and upkeep of the Nightmind Index, which catalogs new, emerging, and undiscovered projects like the one we just examined. If you'd like to join, you can empower Nightmind through Patreon for as little as $2 a month, and it seriously goes a long way. You'll also get instant access to the Patreon member Discord, where we have voice chat hangout nights, and higher tiers include consultations with me about projects you'd like to workshop about or get feedback on. And of course, I'm now on Twitch streaming live investigations and game nights that are in the vein of the material we're used to. I'd love to see you over there. And yes, subscriptions are available if you'd prefer emotes and all of that fun over Patreon, if you're looking for ways to support directly. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and you're welcome to come check out my webpage anytime. Remember to always watch old VHS tapes with a weapon at the ready, and sleep tight.